in progress. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back. It's good to see you all again. We're going to continue. Uh, we're working in 5.4. And the last video we did was kind of like it's in 5.3 in the lecture note or in John Blakely's textbook. Uh, I'll, take, I'll show you it real quick. It was listed in 5.3 as finding the LCD. It's in prep for 5.4. So I called it 5.4a because we're working on adding and subtracting uh, rational expressions with unlike denominators. Unlike. Wow, I'm having a rough time writing this. I'm just going to shorten it to unlike rational expressions. Mathematicians are notoriously lazy. We are some of the laziest. We came up with whole new notations just to save writing one character. Uh, if you take math 44, you'll see it, or 35, you'll see it in there. All right. So we found the LCD before. We were practicing finding LCDs. Here, what we're gonna do is step one, find that LCD like we did in 5.A, 4A. <coughs> and then we're gonna multiply each fraction. So that each has the same LCD. Then at that point, we will have a common denominator. Now we can add, subtract uh, like usual. And don't forget to reduce to lowest terms. All right. Put that little pencil over the top of that, hold it down. Uh, and it's important that you note an ugly answer is still an answer. And it doesn't mean it's wrong. which is a good thing because if ugliness meant wrong, I'd be a terrible teacher. I, I, I don't have no pretty face. I know that, uh, but I'm okay with it. I got a great sense of humor, I think. You're not going to see it as much because you're stuck watching online videos, but in class, in-person lectures, we have a lot of fun. All right, so let's get you, get you uh, crack a lot. Let's get you started. We're going to start with 5x over x minus 2 plus 10 times 2 minus x. Not times, but divided by 2 minus x. All right, so the denominators are different, but they look similar. Uh, in fact, they are off by a negative 1. So I can multiply this by negative 1 on top and bottom. And we get 5x over x minus 2 plus negative 10 over x minus 2. We put them together, we get 5x minus 10 over x minus 2. We need to reduce to lowest terms, see if this simplifies. The top does factor into 5 times x minus 2. And making a note that x cannot equal 2, uh, we reduce this down to 5. Okay. <clears throat> Next question. Let's do y squared plus 6y over y minus 3. And then we're going to subtract the quantity 4y minus 39 
over 3 minus y. Now, you already know how to do this. Give this a try. See what you come up with. Pause the video. All right. I will assume you did. I can factor out a minus here or multiply by a negative. If I do, that can change this to y minus 3 if I put a negative out front with it. That negative out front will turn this to addition. And I will have y squared plus 6y plus 4y minus 39 over y minus 3. And I get y squared plus 10y minus 39 over y minus 3. We want to see if that factors. It does. This is y plus 13 times y minus 3 over y minus 3. We cancel out the y's, replacing them with 1's, and we're just left with y plus 13 with a note that y cannot equal 3 from the denominator, which comes from y minus 3 equals 0. <clears throat> All right. Let's go on to the next one. <clears throat> Let's see. Why don't you do 3a over a plus 9? minus 8a over a plus 5. Wow, I'm going to use capital A's here because my little a and my 9 looked identical. All right, so they have different denominators here, and it's not just by a minus sign. So what we're going to do is the LCD, since they're completely different and they have nothing in common, the LCD should just be a plus 9 times A plus 5. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the 3A over A plus 9. That's going to get multiplied by A plus 5 over A plus 5. We had to do this with numbers uh, when we were doing fractions back in Chapter 1. And now we're doing it here. And I'm going to put these denominators in parentheses. That way I know that it's not just 9 times it. And here I'm doing the other denominator. Now, if you've done the table, if you do the table, let's do the table real quick. One's got A plus 9. One's got A plus 5. Together, they make a plus 9 times a plus 5. The holes in the graph tell us what to multiply by. Just like it did with the numbers, the fractions. This row is missing a plus 5 to make the column complete. This row is missing the a plus 9 to make the column complete. Okay. All right. So... I'm gripping this pin too tight. My fingers are a little bit numb. So weird way to do it. All right, so I'm not gonna multiply them yet. I'm just gonna put them together. <coughs> just to show you what it looks like. And now I'm going to multiply them together. I have 3a squared plus 15a minus 8a squared minus 72a. Look at that. That's a lot of a's. All over. I'm going to leave this factored because I want to simplify or reduce and having it already in Factored form is just preferable. 
if I combine like terms here, 3a squared minus 8a squared go together. That's negative 5a squared. And 15a minus 72, uh, let's see, I'll do go this way, is negative 57a. A plus five, 57 is not a prime number. It's divisible by three, it's three and 19. Uh, but five is prime and doesn't go into 57. The only thing that would factor out is an A, and maybe I'll do that, a negative A, just to make it keep, if we're gonna have factored form on one side, we should probably have factored form on both sides of the equation. There we go. That is a five, looks a lot like an S. I need to be a little bit better with my fives. All right, that's it. We got it into one fraction. Now, if your teacher likes you to have it multiplied out, you've already got the top multiplied out here, negative five A squared minus 57 A. And on the bottom, when you multiply this out, you'll have the a squared. You'll have 14a plus 45. Another way of writing that is putting the negative out front and making these positive. By the same thing, factoring out the negative and just moving it out front. Any of those, these are all equivalent. They're all the same. All right, quit blowing around, fan. All right, let's give you guys a chance to try this out. You know what, I probably need a new piece of paper, these problems. The one thing about these, these problems is in this section, most, a lot of this chapter, they have long problems. All right, so, uh, what number are we on? Four? Yeah, we're on problem four. Let's go with uh, x plus three all over x squared plus 13x plus 42. And we're going to subtract eight over x squared plus 12x plus 35. All right, pause this video and give it a try. You gotta factor the denominator first, then find the LCD, then work this out. All right, if I factor this, this one looks like x plus seven, x plus six. And this one looks like seven and five. So if I make my table, I've got x plus seven, x plus six, this one has the x plus seven, not the x plus six, but it's got the x plus five. So the LCD is one of each. <clears throat> the top one is missing the x plus five. So I'm going to multiply this on top and bottom by x plus five. And this one's missing the x plus six. So I'll multiply this on top and bottom by x plus six. So let me rewrite that a little bit better. I, I got a little cramp right there. And I don't think that's a good way to show it to you. 
So I'm going to do it where I leave a little room on the fractions. And redo that part. This is times x plus 5 over x plus 5. And this is times x plus 6 over x plus 6. That's what I just said in the last one. <clears throat> now, we're going to get a common denominator with x plus 7, x plus 6, x plus 5. I'm going to multiply this out. This is x squared plus 8x plus 15. And this one is 8x plus 48. But there's a minus sign. So I use parentheses because I'm going to need to distribute the minus. And when I distribute the minus and combine like terms, I will have, that will be a negative 8x and a negative 48. The positive 8x and the negative 8x will cancel. I'm going to be left with x squared with 15 minus 48. Let's see. 48 minus 15, 33. all over x plus 7, x plus 6, x plus 5. All right. It looks like uh, this doesn't clean up. That's not a perfect square. Uh, and none of those cancel, so that looks like it's the final form. How about them apples? All right, next one. X plus three over X squared plus 16 X plus 63 plus X plus six over X squared plus 19 X plus 90. Pause the video, give that a try real quick. All right, I will assume you did. It looks like I can rewrite this as the first one is seven and nine x plus 7, x plus 9. And the next one looks like x plus 9, x plus 10. So I guess I should have read it down here where I'll have room to write onto the fraction. We do a quick table, x plus 7, x plus 9, x plus 10, x plus 9, x plus 7, x plus 9 is the top one, it just is the same. We've got the x plus 9, but not the x plus 10 here. So the LCD is one of each. And the holes in the table tell me what to multiply by. X plus 7, X plus 9 is missing X plus 10. I will multiply top and bottom by X plus 10. And the first column is missing, or the second fraction is missing the X plus 7 in the first column. So top and bottom there by X plus 7. All right. So we are going to get one big fraction. And I'm putting the denominators in order. And I'm going to multiply this out. This first one is x squared 
plus 13x plus 30. That's the first set. And the second one we're adding is x squared plus 13x plus 42, which was actually the denominator in the last one. That was easy to see. If I combine like terms, I have 2x squared plus 26 plus 72 all over x plus 7, x plus 9, x plus 10. I will factor out, I'm missing an x there. I'm going to factor out the greatest common factor first is a 2. I have x squared plus 13x plus 36 over x plus 7, x plus 9, x plus 10. Let's see, does 36 factor to add to 13? Nine and four. Do the table real quick as a reminder. Needs to multiply to 36, add to 13. One and 36 is 37. Two and 18 is 20. Three and 12 is 15. Four and nine is 13. X plus nine x plus four. So the x plus nines cancel. We are left with two, two times x plus four over x plus seven, x plus 10, with a note that x plus seven cannot equal zero x plus 9 cannot equal 0, and x plus 10 cannot equal 0. And of course, if your teacher likes it multiplied out, multiply it out. They may not even want you to write down what the, the bad juju numbers are, the domain violators. Domain violators. Or I don't know that I've used it with you guys before, but I like to call them the bad juju numbers. They give you bad juju, you get in trouble. All right, ready to kick it up a notch. Are you ready to learn? All right, let's do it. You know what? I'm going to stop this video and make a second video because this is already getting a little long. The next one, we're going to have uh, three fractions in each problem. Actually, let's see. Yeah. <laughs>